most compliments I get make me happy, except one, and that is being called a good girl. I was raised by two psychiatrists. I have a loving mom and a dad who know a lot about how the brain works. I know what some of you might be thinking in here. Free therapy my whole life. <laughs> well, kind of. One thing my mom refused to do when she raised me was calling me a good girl. The reason for that was that she didn't want me to grow up and become a woman who mainly cared about getting approval from other people. She wanted me to do things for myself and have good self-esteem. She was raised in a similar way. Her parents told her that she was smart, but a little bit lazy. But they also told her that she could be anything she wanted. And that's when she realized that even though she didn't have the typical traits of a good girl, she could still become anything she wanted in life. So what does being a good girl really mean in today's society? To be quiet, to be kind, to please everyone, to get good grades in school, and to get it right the first time. Don't make any mistakes, because that's one of the worst things a good girl can do. So is this any different from how we are raising boys today? Well, when a boy is playing and falling on the ground, people tend to encourage him to get up and try again. But when a girl is playing and falling on the ground, people tend to feel sorry for her and put a bandage on. According to the Journal of Pediatric Psychology, we are four times more likely to tell a girl than a boy to be more careful after a small accident. Due to not caring about being a good girl, I love taking risks. I co-founded an investment bank for tech startups at the age of 23, straight after I graduated from university. I started to meet a lot of startups, and I asked myself, where are all the women? I saw that there were so many more men than women starting companies. I felt like I needed to do something about this. So me and my business partner, we started a business network in order to inspire more women to become entrepreneurs. I've been talking to a lot of women, heard about their questions, their worries, their fears, and I realized that a big obstacle for them was that they were raised to become good girls, and that did not inspire them to become entrepreneurs. There was especially this one girl I met through this network, and she was frustrated about the way she was raised. She was number one in class, she had the best grades in chemistry and math, but there were one thing she loved to do more than anything else. Singing. She loved to sing. So she heard about this show the school was gonna have, and she signed up to be part of it. The day came for the first rehearsal, she got up on stage and she sang her heart out. She loved every second of it. And afterward, she walked off stage and a teacher came up to her. And the teacher said, you're good at so many things, but singing is not really one of them and it's probably not something you should spend your time on doing. I think what this teacher said is one of the reasons for why we have a lot of good girls in school 
but not enough women starting companies. Because the school system is very different from being an entrepreneur. In school, we are taught that there is bad to make a mistake. There's usually only one right answer and one way to get there. When being an entrepreneur, you need to be comfortable with making mistakes. Not be good at something at first, but improving, taking risk, trying different things to realize the vision of your company. I think some of you might be able to relate to this. You have something you're very passionate about, something you would love to do, but you're afraid of putting it out there, afraid about what other people might think, afraid of taking the risk and that you might not be good enough. This particular girl ended up becoming a financial analyst where she could use her math skills. But this job bored her to death. And after a few years, she decided to start her own company. But she was frustrated about how many years she spent living as a good girl, only doing what she was told that she was good at. As I've been working in this startup industry, I've started to learn it more about it. I was expecting a trend of more women starting companies because I'm based here in Sweden, which is considered one of the most equal countries in the world. But one day I read an article that shocked me. Women starting companies decreased by 30% in 2018. And only 1% of the capital invested into startups went to female founded companies. Once again, I asked myself, where are all the women? I started to think, well, maybe it's better in other countries. And in US, it is a little bit better. 2%, but that's $10 billion less than what one e-cigarette company raised all by itself. I've been hearing a lot of business pitches and I started to see a pattern. I was once in a room with a female entrepreneur and an investor. And this entrepreneur had done something remarkable with her startup. Can you guess what? It was profitable. And it had been profitable for the last two years, which is not very common amongst the startups I meet on a daily basis. And the first question the investor asked to this entrepreneur was, how will you make sure to not make a loss this year? So the investor was basically asking how she was going to stay a good girl and not make any mistakes. We tend to ask women how they're not going to lose and men how they're going to win. And this is also revealed in studies from Stockholm School of Economics that we ask women and men different questions when they pitch their business ideas. And an interesting fact I realized is that this applies to both female and male investors. There are, of course, many things we can do to get more women to start companies. School can take their responsibility and encourage more women to take entrepreneurship courses. Government can take their responsibility when they provide funding to innovation. But for all parents, teachers, siblings, and anyone else in here, I encourage you to give compliments in a different way. Just by changing such a seemingly small thing, like the words we use when we give a compliment, we can make a big impact on a person's self-identity, and in the long run, a big impact on the world. So when a girl gets that grade she worked hard for in school, don't call her a good girl. 
call her persistent and tell her that she could be anything she wants. And when a girl won that soccer game, don't call her a good girl. Give her a compliment for the time she fell on the ground and got up again. Call her strong. And when a girl gets that new job she applied for, don't call her a good girl. Call her brave for taking a risk, getting out of her comfort zone to start a new chapter of her life. So please, call girls bold, call them strong, and call them persistent. And for all women in here, it's time for us to stop being good girls. So in the future, we won't have to ask, where are all the women? Because we will be right here. Thank you.